On this special episode of the iPhoneography Podcast, I'm speaking with Rick Salmon from the Explorers of Life Facebook group, who is a travel photographer and also taught at the Calby One Conference. Coming up. It's Saturday, April 1st, and this is No April Fools. I am doing a special episode today with Mr. Rick Salmon. Hello, Rick. How you doing? Hey, thank you so much, Greg, for having me. This is a ton of fun. Thanks for being a part of the Explorers of Life uh, iPhone, smartphone, uh, Facebook group. Uh, you're an amazing photographer and a cool well, instructor, <laughs> and I'm really happy to know you. So thanks so much. This is going to be a ton of fun. Yes, yes, it will be uh, a lot of fun. And thanks for for coming on. I, I really do appreciate it. Um, so you've been a busy guy. You've been uh, here and there and a bit, little bit everywhere. Um, most that notably, sounds like a song. That sounds like a Beatles song. Yeah, yeah, there and everywhere. That's <laughs> yeah, good. really. Um, but you, you just uh, had a what was it about a two week uh, vacation to Morocco? Well, I wouldn't call it a vacation, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Susan, I never go on vacation. I'm always working on a project. But yeah, Susan and I uh, spent two weeks in Morocco. We started in Casablanca, went to the Blue City, Fez, uh, the sand dunes, the Sahara was my favorite uh being in being in the sahara with the with the sand dunes and the camels and riding on a camel and just experiencing different culture and i must say this i've been to about 100 countries and i don't think i've ever been anywhere where i felt this safe is that right eh yeah, that's crazy we're, we're my, walking around go ahead i was just gonna say my two favorite uh types of photos that you've showed were the blue city and yeah. of course the desert um that blue city must have been just amazing. It was amazing. You know, all the houses there and all the stores, they're painted blue. And, you know, <clears throat> getting back to the friendly part of this, yeah. we're walking around one morning and I wanted to have a picture of a person, a man or, or, or a man or a woman, you know, in the street. And there was nobody around. So I asked the shopkeeper, you know, could you pose? He left his shop and walked like a quarter of a mile to help us out with a specific shot. Then I asked another that shopkeeper, could you t could you show us where the art center is? He left the shop open and, and, and guide <laughs> us. We're in the sand dunes. We're in the sand dunes the last day. We're tired. And it's really hard walking, or walking up these sand dunes, Greg. Yeah. And we're really tired. It's late in the afternoon. And I wanted to get to a spot. And Susan was tired. And I said, okay, let's go back. All of a sudden, a guy comes along in a Jeep, four-wheel drive. Well, it wasn't a Jeep, four-wheel drive vehicle. I think it was a Toyota. And he says, you know, you want me to take you around? I said, how much? He said, 70 bucks for an hour and a half. Well, we gave him a nice tip. But Susan, I and my friend, we got in his car in the middle of the Sahara, and he drove us around. I told him, <laughs> I said, <laughs> I said, I wouldn't do this in Croton on Hudson, New York, where I live, get in a car with a stranger and drive around. Oh, that's so right. anyway, it's a very religious country. It's a Muslim country. And uh, I felt very, very safe. Well, that's that's. Uh incredible because a friend of mine went to a, a local um a local town about mm. 45 minutes from here mm. uh and it's in in the summer it, like it's a beach town and in the summer it's just booming with people in the winter it's like a ghost town mm -hmm. he said he was feeling a little down about you know not being inspired by anything so he thought you know what he's just gonna go there and start taking pictures see what he got he was taking a picture of a street scene and there was a, a uh, I think it was a coffee shop mm -hmm. and, or, a, or a bakery or something. And the proprietor was standing in the door with his hands on his hips mm -hmm. wondering like, okay, what are you doing? Well, he was taking a shot of the street and it was, it was a, a wide shot. And this guy eventually came out and expressed his dis you know his disapproval with him taking these pictures well yeah he was on the other side of the street but that's that's you know small to mid-sized town canada compared right. to what you just told me about morocco it's amazing i mean more of the world needs to be a little bit like morocco i think <laughs> i think so i think so it was amazing and what's what's really uh interesting and this is the point of the uh the podcast. I'm I'm actually uh, picking these pictures while I'm speaking to you, so I could send them to you to uh, to mm -hmm. include. Um, what was amazing is that I just took my iPhone. The whole thing was with the iPhone, first time yes. ever. I, I and this was I had the most fun. I think, and actually Scott Kelby, who I think you know, mm -hmm. uh, he said this. Is, he thought this is the best work I ever did. 
Is that right? Yeah. That, that's it, incredible. It, it uh, was now incre- you, you talked about this, uh, this, this trip or this type of thing at the uh, Kelby One conference, right? Yeah, I talked about it at the Kelby One conference, which had, uh, I think, actually it was the biggest, most successful conference uh, they ever had. And it was all the, mobile, mobile centric or iPhone centric, right? It was, it was iPhone, iPhone centered, and yeah, yeah, I have all these pictures so far, everything we've talked about. So, um, yeah, it was just so much fun the conference. But traveling with the iPhone, you know, I had, I had a strap, I had a backup battery, which is a real. I didn't need it, but I think the backup battery pack I had was gives you like thirty two hours. Oh wow! Uh, so that and the strap and Susan Salmon, she's the one who got me into the iPhone a couple of years ago. That you know, with these lenses here, you know, the wide angle lens, I think is I have it written down here somewhere. I think it's you probably know better than I do. I think it's uh, thirteen millimeters. Yes. Yeah. That thirteen millimeter lens was incredible. I got these shots, and you know, as you know, with the uh, high efficiency files, it's like always HDR. So yeah, I could yeah. concentrate on composition. I didn't think about ISO. I didn't think about aperture. I think about didn't think about uh, a shutter speed. I just thought about composition, which yeah. was just so cool that we can do this. Yeah, and the exposure latitude of these things is amazing. Like it, it I know, I know it's all computational and all that stuff. I get yeah, yeah. it, but it, it, it's just it, it takes so much out of the technical part of taking pictures, and. Like you said, you can concentrate on, on the composition and uh, you know on the subject and and all that stuff. It's it's just amazing what they can do. We took night shots in Marrakesh uh, mm-hmm. from a top uh, top of a rooftop, and I my get I can't even guess what the dynamic range was from the sunset to the deep inside. You can see inside the uh, the shops there in the square. My God, it was just amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you're you're just using the native camera app when you shoot. I'm just using the uh, native camera app most of the time. Uh, what I'm really into now is this app. Uh, uh, well, for shooting, yeah, but uh, I'm also trying long exposure. Have you t- even? Sorry, even longer. Yes, you, yes. Even longer is amazing. Yeah, you know where you could shoot up to a 24 hour exposure. <laughs> which, oh yeah, which is cool. So <clears throat> I, I was getting these these long exposure shots without an ND filter, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, with without you know a self timer. Well, I had the self timer on without an accessory timer. It was just so much fun, and I think you know that's why I got into photography in the first place, not to make money. You know, like most people, to have fun. And I don't think I've ever had as much fun. And actually, a lot of people are saying that they said, "Man, Rick has a, a new zest, zest for life." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll I'll send a link to you about um. For the live stream I did yesterday with Shane Mostyn, where we had the developer of Even Longer on the show. And we also had a, a fellow who uses Even Longer to do hyperlapses, and they are absolutely stunning. And oh, wow. So, so I'll send you that link. It's We went on for about a, um, almost an hour and a half. Um, so if when you got time to sit back and just listen to it, it's it's really, um, really interesting to hear. Mario Tomayek, uh talk about the app that he's developed, and he just does it on the side. He has a day job. I know that. Yeah, and do someone you know compared, Mario? No, I don't know. But someone compared that app to another app uh, backed by like a giant company with like thirty-seven employees. I'm exaggerating a little. Yeah, and the, like you say, he's one guy, and I think this is the Eric Kuna and Scott Kelby. They love this app. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's it's really incredible. Um, there's another app that is the well so even longer does raw yeah long exposure and you know what i call them long exposure ex- sequences because yeah, right they're not true long exposures if you get down to the meat and potatoes of it yeah but um for for the sake of arguing we always call it long exposure yeah. and the, the there's another app called reexpose that is that's the, the other only, one right yeah that's the only other one that can do raw long exposure and both of those apps are incredible um I have them both. I use them both. And to ask me which one that would be my favorite would be like trying to pick a ch- my favorite child. So mm-hmm. you know, I, I I can't even can't even go there. But um, yeah, Mario does a great job with this even longer. And what impresses me the most about it is the fact that you can do these m- very long, like six, eight, 10, 12 hour exposures yeah. with hardly using any battery. Like the uh, 
the efficiency of the app is incredible. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, like it, I'm, is I'm, conf- it is a little confusing ahead. in the beginning. That's what I was just checking. Like I, I'm setting my camera up for like a long exposure, mm-hmm. you know, in, in bright sunlight of these waves crashing. And it says my shutter speed's like one thirty two hundredth of a second. I said, what's yeah. going on? But so as you just pointed out, it's a lot of exposures at one thirty two hundred. Yeah, it, it uses frame averaging. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I believe his app, if you if you look at your um uh if you look at your image in the photos app and swipe up to see the data, yeah, I think it tells you how many exposures. Oh really? We're used at that speed at that, like using that shutter speed <laughs> combined to um make that image. Oh I I'll check that out okay, at another time. But yeah, I mean the apps, the other app that I used uh, a lot was I uh, don't know if you use it a uh, dramatic black and white. It's a good one. Yes, I do. Dramatic have and in, in dramatic black and white for your listeners who don't uh, and viewers who don't um, know about it, you have black and white option you and a lot of variables in that then you have dramatic black and white and you have an infrared and you know I, there's a lot of programs like nick uh, software nick mm-hmm. color effects pro has infrared and a bunch of others have the infrared but this infrared app i thought was uh was the best i'm going to find that picture so you so you can uh include it but it was the infrared is just so cool yeah yeah, there's so many good apps to use. But <clears throat> so when, while traveling, how did you find uh, carrying just the iPhone and whatever little bit of kit that you had with you compared to carrying, you know, the big Sony gear and stuff? Well, it was so freeing. You yeah. know, we're walking around the Blue City. I have this rather than a backpack and a pro looking camera. I don't look like a pro. You're right. right? Yeah. Yeah. And that changed everything. That changes everything in street photography. Yeah, sure does. So I, I didn't look like a pro, so I was less intimidating, and I felt less intimidated. So it was working like both ways. So again, I, I felt freer. I, I felt more relaxed. I felt like, you know, I still ask people if I could take their picture, especially in a Muslim country, which mm-hmm. is very, very important. I'm respecting the subject, whether it's a person or or if you're taking a wildlife photograph or if you're out, uh, you know, hiking somewhere, respecting the environment. All this stuff is very, very important. Respect is important. But it was so nice to not uh, – Susan, who uh, we've traveled to about 100 countries together, uh, you know, she saw my my, – I just had my computer bag. She said, it always looks like you're missing something. And, you know, because I usually have my big bag. Yeah. But I'm going to Antarctica. In uh, October, mm-hmm. I'm just taking my iPhone. Oh, wow. The new iPhone, the, yeah, the 15, yeah. because I hope, I, uh, you you may uh, have heard something different, but I heard it's going to have a 6X. I was hoping it's going to have a 10X. But... I just read yesterday that it could have a 10X. Really? If it has yes. a 10X. Well, either way, I'm going to yeah. only take my, uh, and I've been to Antarctica before with the long lenses and this and that. And I might miss, I looked at my shots, 95% of my shots were taken with the wide angle lens or medium telephoto, because in Antarctica, Mm -hmm. you can get, you know, as close as you are to the mic. (laughs) Um, Yeah, yeah. you're You're not allowed to approach the animals closer than 15 feet, but that doesn't mean they can't come up to you. So the penguins, you know, come this close. It's a, (laughs) and I'm going to Tanzania in, um, in uh, September. I think in, uh, in September, and if that if that late September, if that iPhone comes out with the 10x, that's all I'm going to take. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's so the the quality of the raw files that you could you know crop in, and even though I'm not a fan usually of big cropping in. Yeah. Uh, with the, with the ten x zoom, I mean, I'm, I'm dreaming. I'm hoping. So if Apple's listening to us, I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sure would be nice. Yeah, um, yeah the, uh, that was that. That's I prop. That's probably the biggest complaint about serious iPhone photographers is the lack of the zoom. Yeah, I know my co-host Dave Vodner um, goes on about that and has gone on about that a few times, and I don't blame him one bit because he's he's taken like he lives in Pittsburgh. And for him to get a shot across the big river, I mean, if he zooms in like 15 times, it's all digital. And it, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, he's the first one to admit it doesn't look great. 
Doesn't the but, Galaxy or one of those phones have like a 10x zoom? Uh, they have a, a 100 times. Now it's, um, I think it's 10, 10 times optical, but then it, the rest of it's digital. And uh, there's been a lot of chatter on the internet about, um, you, you know, everybody with those phones is taking moonshots, but Samsung is basically um, using AI and detail enhancement and all this stuff to make the details of the moon show up better. So the the camera itself is not really capturing the moon. It's um, you know, it's all done with uh, it's not an overlay per se, but it's it's AI generated. Hmm. So um, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about that in the uh, in the press and whatnot. So um, but you know that the, the zoom that it does say, um, if you're taking a photo of a bird in a tree and you can zoom yeah. in on it. It's pretty impressive. It, yeah, it, is, it is pretty good. <clears throat> and uh, I mean, what do you think this is going to be like in five years? You know, it's just, I mean, actually, we were in uh, we were in Morocco, like you mentioned, for two weeks. My guess is we saw less than less than maybe seven people with big cameras. Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah, I think, amazing. I think more and more people are traveling with a smartphone these days. Yeah. Um I'm not I'm not a traveler. I'm I'm mm-hmm. kind of a homebody. But I mean I, I watch and I listen to a lot of things about photography and 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 I know there's a lot of travelers or uh people that do travel with their uh, cameras and their phones and stuff. But I mean 15 years ago to even 10 years ago everybody was lugging the big bags down around with their uh, big lenses and all that stuff now yeah. like you say it's 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 uh barely out there now you know there's there's so few people lugging all the gear around because these things are getting so good they're so good and they're, and there's so much fun yeah um so the conference um it, it was all virtual right so you just did it from home is that how it went yeah, I did it from home, and the Kelby folk, Kelby One folks, did it from down there, and it was so much fun. Uh, you know, they started this in the uh, during the pandemic, right? And it took off. But uh, and they have Lightroom conferences in Photoshop. But this was, I think, it's telling you something about how popular the iPhone is or the smartphone is. Uh, well, this was the iPhone only, but it was so much. The comments, people, people were blown away by all the pictures. My friend Glenn Dewis in, um, yeah, in, I know in England. Yeah. yeah, he was he he make you should have him on the, you might want to have him on the show. He's amazing. Yeah. Um and he was on Frederick Van Johnson, all the big names mm-hmm. that I've followed for years who use big cameras now using the iPhone and getting amazing results. Yeah. So that begs the question, what what's what is it that um attracts all these, you know, professionals to sh- to shoot with the iPhone? A little more like like you know yourself and and uh frederick and du- uh, uh glenn, glenn and scott kelby all these all these big time photographers you know to me anyway like you guys are my heroes <laughs> um are all starting to shoot with the iphone now so what was what was it that attracted you to using the iphone i know susan used it yeah. for years before you did but um you know, was it Susan that kind of got you into it? or well, She got me into it. Uh, yeah, I would be teaching a workshop like on the Oregon coast and people would set up their, their tripods and their big cameras and I'd be, you know, pontificating, you know, you, you do this, do that, shutter mm-hmm. speed, aperture. This, and then she'd take a picture uh, and, you know, be processing it right there in distressed FX or dramatic black and white or Snapseed. And people would go over there and say, wow, this is amazing. So yeah. I think it's the speed and the ease and the quality uh, and the fun, you know, that you could see the results. You know, Scott Kelby told a story at this conference, and it's true. He And he's, he tell, tells it a lot whenever, I think every time he teaches an iPhone conference, we were in China together. I was teaching a workshop with Scott. We're both, uh, we're both teaching, and Susan was there. We get up early one morning. You've seen pictures of those cormor- cormorant fishermen, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the lanterns. So mm-hmm. we, we set up our gear and everything, and we, we haven't even taken a picture. And Susan has taken a picture in low light 
processed it and put it on Instagram. Well, we're all, you know, doing this. And Scott says, you know, this is when I, this is when I, Scott Kelby, realized that, you know, this is really a, a really cool thing. But yeah. the quality, you know, what do we want? Uh, we want ease. We want fun. We, we want our pictures to look good. Yeah. And maybe that's why Scott said, uh, you know, that he that this is the best work he's ever seen for me because it's I was really driven by the way to to get good yeah. images. This is the yeah. first time I'm ever going on a trip with only the iPhone. So I was driven. I did spend a lot of time processing the images, but the comp computational photography is is just mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, I I wrote a piece um, on my website about the computational stuff and and I called it the gap is getting smaller and it was it was about the um uh, portrait mode in the iphone mm -hmm. and how yeah. you can change you know you can play around with the um so-called depth of field and and, mm -hmm. and the you know the, the blur and stuff like that and um you know that was going back to i think january of 2018 so i mean this stuff's been been going on for quite some time but the image quality of the cameras themselves has just been getting better and better and better. And, um, I mean, it's, it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to shoot a wedding with an iPhone now. I mean, I took pictures at my son's wedding uh, yeah. a few, few years ago with a, with a 10 S max. And I hired a professional photographer to do the event. So just for kicks, we're standing there and we're comparing images. She says, how did you get that? Right, you know, that exposure latitude like that, and I said, "Oh, I don't know. That's just what it does." <laughs> well, also with the with the with the iPhone, when the portrait mode like you were talking about, I do the one where you have stage lighting, where you make the background black, and people are blown away. You know that originally wasn't that good. Now it's pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah. The segmentation mask is really getting better. That's that's you know that's the what picks out the the subject. And and then you can black out the background and and mm -hmm. yeah it's it's really good. I think have you heard maybe... of the app? <clears throat> have you heard of the app called Focus? Yes, yeah, Susan has that. Where you yeah. can change. Yeah, yeah that's it, amazing. It, it's fun to play changing, around. With. Changing the aperture in the background. Yeah. Well, I, you you said is I think we probably mentioned fun about thirty two times so far. You know, <laughs> yeah. in this re, in this recording, and it, it is fun. And maybe I think having the bigger screen you know, makes it more fun. Maybe you're mm -hmm. more in touch. You're not squinting through this or on the back of a, a mirrorless or digital SLR. Maybe the screen's like kind of small. This is just, um, I think it's very rewarding. Like it's instant. It's, it's be, even though digital photography is instant gratification, this is like instant gratification times or whatever, because of, I think because of the apps and you start thinking, I think you start thinking differently. Yes, we think yeah. about and when you know ten years ago when I was in Cuba or something, I think take a picture. Okay, this is what I could do in Lightroom and Photoshop. Thinking about that during, you know, but now it, because it's at your fingertips, I think it's um, it's just so much fun. Yeah, I knew when uh, when Scott wrote his book about iPhone photography, yeah. and, and, I, and I got it as soon as it was available. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew that when he wrote that book there was going to be a lot more coverage about the iphone from his company and yeah. uh, you know and and the the conference speaks for itself um so i should have maybe done this at the beginning of the show but for those of my listeners who may not know who you are who is rick salmon <laughs> and and i generally try to get people to to do it in like a tweet yeah yeah well i right well i'm a proud dad first and foremost uh my son's uh he landed the dream job of his life. He's teaching finance at Harvard Business School. Oh, so, wow. Good. So this is my this is my big accomplishment, uh our big accomplishment. Uh we put a lot into raising him and he's doing great. So other than Excellent. that, uh you could see uh, those of you who are seeing this uh the video version of this, you can see my guitars in the back. I pl actually play guitar way more than I take pictures. Oh, really? Oh yeah, I have a, on my website. The first thing you see is Rick's music room, where I have free guitar and piano lessons. And on Friday, this is going beyond the tweet, sorry. But on That's Fridays, okay. <laughs> I post like a jumpstart your weekend thing, where I I I put together a musical piece with some energy in it. So yeah, I would say photography is part of my life. Yeah, 
Yeah, and you were uh, you were with the Explorers of Light uh, group with Canon before, correct? I, w- I was, but I upped my game to Sony. So now yeah. I'm shooting with the A1, and that Sony 200 to 600. You know, people think, oh, Rick's so into the iPhone, he's given up the other stuff. No. Uh, I, I was just down in uh, Florida photographing birds with the A1 and the Sony 200 to 600. And the eye and the eye tracking, how this follows the subject. So it locks on the subject. And if the bird's flying around, it fo- you know, you don't have to <laughs> do anything. It just follows it. It's kind of <laughs> like amazing. cheating, especially if you get 30 frames per second. But the, the, the in addition to that, the uh, dynamic range of the Sony sensor, and I think the iPhone or the next iPhone is going to have the Sony sensor in it. Oh, it's so been Sony, using Sony sensors for years. Yeah, so Sony is yeah. really a, an amazing, com- amazing, amazing company. So yeah, I'm love, I'm loving the A1 and the 200 to 600. I was was using the 100 to 500, but that extra 100 millimeters in wildlife photography is really cool, and you don't need a 2x conver- 1.4x converter. Yeah, yeah, because that would just kind of yeah take some light, light out of it. Yeah, but... and it's, you have to put something on and everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, so uh what's next for Rick Salmon with his iPhone? Uh uh well uh we're going to uh, there's a, a very famous iconic sh- uh, place in New York City called Dumbo Pier. Probably seen pictures of all the pilings in the foreground and the city in the back. I uh, believe actually, I have, yeah. Actually, you probably can't see it, but it's the centerpiece uh behind okay. me on, on my on my wall there is very small. Yep. I'm challenging, and that was a very popular picture, one of my best uh, sellers. I'm challenging myself to get a better picture with the iPhone. Ah, okay. So we're going there. We're going there next week, and then uh, with uh, talk about uh, uh, even longer. We're going to Niagara Falls. Oh, nice. we're going to try doing Niagara Falls at night with even mm-hmm. longer. So uh, other than that, I'm learning some new songs on uh, on guitar, on bass guitar. I play bass mostly, and it's all it's all good. Yeah, good. Uh, so, uh, Susan, like she's she's a, a, a an avid iPhone photographer. Has she got anything that she does uh, other than personal stuff? Or, well, she know? actually was uh, one of the instructors on the oh, on that's the right. One, she yeah. was. Uh, we've done class. We did a business class before, which is a takeoff of our book, uh, "How to Make Money While You're Sleeping," which is one of my best selling books. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we did a business class last. Last year? Yeah, last year or early. Yeah, last year we did a, a business class, but she had her own uh, solo uh, uh, class on the Kelvin One Conference on apps, her seven favorite apps. Oh, and the class nice. was super popular, and I was glued to the screen while she was doing it because I yeah. wanted to. Uh, any insight as to what her favorites could be? Um... Well, uh, it's the same ones that I have. Uh, because she told me about them. Um, <laughs> and just by the way, just a quick tip: I have all my photo apps in a folder. Yeah. Rather, yeah. So, so she uses, she loves distressed FX, mm-hmm. uh, Light Leaps. Did you, have you tried Light Leaps? Yeah. Light Leaps is really cool. We could put in all different uh, light beams and stuff. Snapseed, she loves uh, dramatic black and white. Lens flare is fun. Uh, dark room. I forget the I forget the other ones, but those are those are some of her uh, those are some of her favorites. Have you looked at lens distortion? No, it's a good one. Um, you can actually have a lot of fun with it. You could put, uh, you know, moon, planets, all that stuff in the sky. There's other, there's there's different. Like I, I have uh, the paid version. I don't know what you get for the free version, but um, there's all kinds of things you can you can do. Um, gosh, I there may. I don't know if there's a reflect part. I know there's an app called Lens reflect. Distortion. I think it's called Lens Distortion. I'm looking for an app that makes like a fisheye shot. I don't want to buy one of those cheap fisheye lenses that destroys your image. Right, yeah. I know um, how to do it in Photoshop with warp, but uh, mm-hmm. I'm looking for an app that does that. Uh, yeah, so Lens Distortions. It has, uh, let's see here. Gosh, some of these apps I've I'm ashamed to say I have probably over 50 photography related apps on my phone. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be ashamed. Uh, I'd be but proud. <laughs> the, the shameful part is I don't use them enough to really remember everything about them. 
Um, oh gosh, there's there's a lot of different. Well, that's the thing. Do. It's like playing the piano, like playing the guitar. You have to do it a lot uh, yeah. if you want to if you want to get good at it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. There's it, it's a good one anyway. Uh, have a look at it. Um, it. It's definitely worth it to uh, to take take a few minutes and look it up. And um, gosh, I, I don't know. Uh, so anything anything else you want to plug before we uh, call it a day here? No, just uh, if uh, folks want to get uh, inspired, you know, the face group, Facebook group that you're a part of, Explorers of Life, uh, you could just find it. Just type in Rick Salmon, Explorers of Life. Well, uh, I have a, I have an actual uh, link to it in the show oh, notes yeah. for every podcast. Yeah, we, have so. a, we have more than a thousand people. I just gave everyone an assignment this week to do a uh, uh, silhouettes. So that was, yeah. should, that should be fun uh, using one of my Morocco pictures. So. I just want to thank you so much for having me. I always love talking about uh, photography and and the mm-hmm. iPhone. And uh, hope, hopefully, I get to meet you someday in person. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, again, folks, this is not April Fools. This is Rick Salmon live <laughs> <laughs> in person. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, I've been uh, kind of watching your work for years. Uh, back, I, I used to shoot a Canon DSLR, and mm-hmm. and uh, you know. It was always inspiring to see what you do, and and now with your iPhone stuff, it's just all the like starting fresh again with the inspiration. And um, I do really enjoy the group. Uh, when did you start that? Is about what four months ago? I started it on uh, on New Year's Eve. Oh, okay. Well, yep. That's a good I started day. it. I started it on New Year's Eve, and I said, okay, I'm just going to have some fun with the uh, with this one, and it turned into uh, you know a ton of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sure is a lot of great people on there, and uh, I've I've always been of the mind, you know, teach what you know and learn what you don't. So whenever right. someone on there needs help with something, if I know anything about it, I'm always yeah. Off, no, glad thank to offer you so much for help. chiming in. Your yeah, posts are very so. popular. All right. Well, thanks, Rick. Uh, really appreciate it, and just can't wait to see what you do next. Well, thank you so much, my friend. Hang in there. Okay. Take care. <laughs>